Hi there, and welcome once again to our Smart Mates TVET session. My name is Sito Bejane, and in today's session, we'll be looking at Industrial Electronics N5 Power Supplies. That will be Module 2 of the Industrial Electronics N5 TVET First Textbook by Macmillan and Tropent Publishers. In today's session, we'll just be focusing on a filter rectifier using a simple capacitor filter, also known as a shunt capacitor. We know that a rectifier forms part of the family of the typical power supply or the typical DC power supply. Here, we know that a typical DC power supply consists of four main components, which is the transformer, the rectifier, the filter, and lastly, the voltage regulator. Now we've already discussed the interests of a transformer. We've already discussed the interests of a rectifier, but now we're looking at what happens when you filter this circuit. We've already looked at how a rectifier operates. However, we know that rectification is the process of changing AC to DC components. Let us dive into today's question. The statement on the question reads as follows. The transformer is a step down and it steps down an AC supply voltage from 240 volts at 50 Hz to 48 volts, which is then connected to a rectifier through a capacitor filter. The load resistor is 440 ohms while the capacitor has a value of 4,400 microfarads. Calculate the following when a rectifier is used as 1, a half-wave rectifier, 2, a full-wave rectifier. Now, what we'll be doing here in our two circuits that corresponds to this question, we'll be calculating each component side by side. This is also to help you understand how the difference between a half-wave filtered capacitor filtered rectifier is different from a full wave capacitor filtered rectifier. Now, they have already given us the stepped down voltage, which is 48 VRMS. This should appear both sides. The first question wants us to calculate the output DC voltage. Now, the equation to calculate our output DC voltage, VDC, is given by VM into 2F. CRL divided by 2FCRL plus 1. This is for half wave rectifier. For full wave rectifier, it will be given by VM 4FCRL 4FCRL plus 1. However, if you can look at your textbook, there is a table of equation that consists of all the possible equations that you could use each time you encounter a question of this nature. My advice to you is practice and understand when and why and how to use these equations. This will be able to assist you to identify the type of an equation that you may need to use whenever a question like this is presented. Here, I chose to use this type of question because I am provided with the frequency in the circuit, the capacitor in the circuit, and the load resistor in the circuit. I may not be provided with the maximum voltage, but I am able to calculate the maximum voltage by making use of the RMS equation. Kindly please go through your equations in the book. Those will be very helpful and ensure that you master them for the exam. Now, in this quest equation, I'm only missing Vm. It means that I can calculate Vm by using this equation here, which is Vrms divided by 7.07. .07. Our Vrms voltage is given as 48. This would give us 67.882. 
false. Same applies this side. This should give us the very same answer. Why? Because to calculate Vm either on a full wave or a half wave, you are still going to get the very same answer. Now we need to take this Vm and substitute it to that equation. Therefore, our Vdc will be equal to Vm 2FCRL 2FCRL plus 1. Let us make our substitution. 67.882 into 2 times 50 heads multiplied by our capacitor, which is 4,400 exponent negative 6. Our load resistor, which is 440. Divided by 2, 50, 4,400, exponent negative 6, 440, plus 1. You punch that in your calculator. Ensure that your calculator is always resetted. This is going to assist you such that when you start calculating, you don't face any problems. So... We'll punch that in our calculator, just like that. When you use your calculator, I would advise you, instead of putting in multiplies, rather use brackets. Brackets are so useful that they easily distinguish themselves from an exponential, a negative exponential number and a multiplied number. However, it all comes down to preference. How you are good in using your calculator and how that calculator is also resetted. The more smarter the calculator, the easier for you you'd be able to calculate. Here, I'm getting my answer as 67.533 volts. Now let us do the same for a full wave rectifier. The only difference here with the full wave rectifier is that instead of a 2, I'm going to use a 4. But the equation, guys, is simply the same. That is the most amazing part here, is that if you now understand the equation in the half wave sector, you can simply implement the very same equation on the full wave side. That would be able to assist you understand these equations. My space is very limited here, so I'd have to try and squeeze in a lot of information into the small space. However, I would advise you to zoom in when you are watching this video. Also, to have a beautiful picture, try to set your YouTube video to HD or one, or you can set it on the, um, yes, it could be HD for quality. Um, if it supports 4K, you can also watch the video in a 4K version. Um, you can also set your pixel uh, for 1820 uh, instead of 360. Uh, you can also set your pixel at least at 720p. Uh, that will give you a much better picture. So it will be easier for you to do those, um, or rather to see what exactly is happening here. Otherwise, you could simply download the video if you are able to and watch it on a bigger screen. It could either be your TV or your laptop. This will also come in helpful. But I will always advise you to zoom in where you don't understand. You can press pause and then zoom in. This will be helpful as well, so that you see exactly what I'm writing. I know sometimes it could be quite small because of the space, and then I'm trying that everything should just appear in one page, so that there isn't anything that is um, blurred out. Now, that is our DC voltage for both half wave and full wave rectification for both half wave and
full wave rectification. Right. Let us move to the second question. The second question they want us to calculate the load current, IDC. The load current here, I can use the equation IDC is equal to VDC divided by R load. This equation should be the same both sides. Now, there are many equations to calculate this. Use the table of equation provided to you in the student book. It is very convenient for you to use that. Now, this side, it's going to be 67.533 divided by 440. This side, it's going to be 67.707 divided by 440. If you punch that in your calculator, you are going to get 0 0.153 amperes here. This side, you'll be able to get 0 0.154. 0 0.154. But always make sure that you punch your calculator. This will help eradicate mistakes. And it will also train you on how to use a calculator. Right. The third equation, they want us to calculate a ripple factor. Ripple factor, I may choose to use the equation to calculate a ripple factor here 1 over 2 root 3 FC R load. But because this side this is a full wave, the equation should be the same. The only difference is that the two now would be that way. Why is this? Why do we keep changing the 2 and putting it to a 4? This is why. Now, the frequency is given as 50 hertz. This is the frequency supplied at the input. Right? For a half wave, the frequency should be 2 times that. Right? That is the normal standard frequency this is standard right but for half wave now the frequency this one we need to also add another two multiplying it by the two that is already there which gives you four times the frequency this is because the number of diodes that start operating, they increase as we move with the uh, or rectification circuitry. Right. But all this information is available to you in the student book. Read the student book carefully and you will see. 4400 exponent to negative 6 multiplied by 440 let me erase this here because it needs more space and just write it here yeah that's 2 root 3 50 4400 exponent to negative 6 multiplied by 440 same applies this side it's gonna be 1 over 4 root 3 50 4400 exponent negative 6 440 there then we punch that in our calculator we find that the ripple factor this side would be 0 0.003 and the ripple factor on the other side would be 0 0.001 that is our ripple factor. And then the last question in our session today would be for us to calculate, would be for us to calculate uh, the ripple output voltage, V ripple RMS, V ripple RMS. Now, the equation I chose to calculate the ripple RMS 
is V ripple vector multiplied by VDC here. The side, the same thing. V DC. However, in the table of equations, there are many equations that you could choose from. However, also look at what is given to you, what is at your disposal before you start calculating. That should be able to assist which equation you should pick for your calculation. This is 0 0.201 volts and this on the other side is 0 0.101. Volts. Now, all these equations in your textbook should be able to aid your calculations. Do not jump these equations. They are very important. They come in handy and they'll come in helpful. Remember, when you enter the exam room, ensure you start with questions you find simplest before you move on to the complex equations. That's it for me today, folks. Let us meet again next time for another exciting session of Industrial Electronics and 5.